Hi folks, Jeff Sankstack here. I want to show you how to use keyframes to control audio volume levels in Premiere Pro. I've got some music and I have a narration. The music is stereo and you can see this inside the source monitor, two channels, and the narration is monaural. Again, just one channel. And we'll put the music on first on the stereo track here and then we'll put the narration on in a moment because I want to place the narration relative to where I want the audio in the music to drop. Uh, one of the things you can do in Premiere to help you uh, when you work with audio is to open up the audio track headers like that and then further expand them by dragging the bottoms down like that. I'm going to do this with both of them. So now the bottom's kind of too close to the bottom to really work with it. So I'm going to put my cursor between the video and audio tracks there. If you get that little double that parallel line with two arrows, I can drag everything up because I'm just going to work with audio here. So now I can expand the bottom of the audio 2 track, which is empty at the moment. I'm going to play this guy and decide where I want the volume to drop, and that will dictate where I'm going to put the narration start. Okay, I have the narration start right about here. So I take the narration down to that track and put its header right there, or the first frame there. So now we're ready to go. And if I'll play these two guys together... This is the story of my father, David Sangstack's ancestors. His ancestors came from England, Ireland, and Germany. My father's so now you can hear that the audio and the music is too loud relative to the, na to the narration, so I want to drop the audio in the music to not step on the uh, narration audio. And to drop audio with keyframes, you typically work inside the effect controls panel, but I'm going to show you how to work inside the clip as well. So we'll start with the effect controls panel. I want the audio to drop starting right about there and finish dropping right about here. So I'll click on this clip to make it active. Go to the Effect Controls panel, and here is the only fixed effect associated with an audio-only clip, and it's called Volume. All audio clips, or all clips that have audio, have a volume fixed effect associated with them. I'll open it up. It has Bypass and Level. We're working only with Audio Level. You'll notice it says 0 dB. 0 dB doesn't mean silent. It means the original audio level of that clip that you're working with. So if you want to reduce the audio, you'll have a negative dB. If you want to increase the audio level, it'll be a positive dB. I'm going to open up the little drop-down disclosure triangle here. and This just reveals these two graphs, which may kind of throw people off at first, but uh, it's very helpful when you see the relative changes to audio levels by looking at especially this particular value graph here. This is an acceleration graph down here, but this is the value graph. You notice the value goes from negative infinity to 6. So you can increase the dBs up to 6 dBs louder than the existing one using this particular controller. Or you can drop it to negative infinity, which means silent. So that's, that's where we're going to start. And keyframes are turned on by default when you work with volume. Normally keyframes are off. Normally the toggle animation switch is off, but it's on by default in the volume effect. And so if I were to change this now, that would add a keyframe there with the changed value, and it would start at negative 3.8 dB and continue at negative 3.8 dB. So that's not what I want to do. So I'll go Control or Command Z to undo that. What I want to do is I want it to go from the beginning to this point and not change its value. So I'm going to put a keyframe here that says, you know, keep this value from the beginning to this point. So to put a keyframe there, I just click on the little diamond here, the level keyframe diamond that adds a keyframe. And there's a keyframe at the value of 0 dB. So from the very beginning to that point, it'll play at 0 dB. And even after that point, but now obviously I want to put a keyframe after this to show the volume level dropping. I want the, I want the volume level to drop enough that it just drops so it's right before the, the, the narration gets rolling. So I want it to drop from there, this little point, to this next little point here where the current time indicator is. Have it drop down. Now, it's kind of an experiment to see how much it should drop. I'll start by having it drop, uh, let's say, minus 6 or so. And you can see the graph now showing up that it's a drop there from 0 dB to minus 6 dB. Let's just listen, let's just listen to how that sounds. This is the story of my father, David Sangstack's ancestors. His an so that works pretty well. That is a good start. Minus 6 dB is kind of a, maybe a standard uh, 
change in volume level when you're going to you know, put some other audio over some music like this. But you're going to see later that that's not enough because if you look at the volume levels here, you can see in this clip that the volume levels are not that high by looking at the waveform. But here they get higher, so the volume is going to go up inside this clip. It's going to sound louder. So I'm, I'm going to need to reduce this volume again later. So I need to put more keyframes in. So what I want to do is I want to put a keyframe here that holds this thing from here to here. I could use what's called a hold keyframe, but it's just as easy to just add another keyframe here by clicking this little diamond to add a keyframe. And that'll be a keyframe that's equal in value to the preceding keyframe. So it's minus 6.3 and minus 6.3 here. I can navigate to the left, minus 6.3, navigate to the right by clicking on this little triangle to the right, and it hasn't changed the value. Now, going forward, I want to drop the value to, to keep this next bit of music from being too loud. So this next section will be too loud. So I'm going to drop this thing now from 6.3, let's say, down to, I don't know, minus 17 or something, or 15. Let's see how that sounds. Stacks ancestors. His ancestors came from England, Ireland, and Germany. My father, oh, that's, a, that's a fair amount. And I want to hold that now for the duration of that loud passage, and then maybe bring it up just a little bit. I can see the passage here, and I can use the clip view to kind of help me make my decision as to where I put keyframes. I can put them here in the clip. So instead of working inside the effect controls panel, I'm going to go down here and work in the clip. And to get a better view, I'm going to expand my view of the clip by pressing the plus key a couple times to get a better shot at it and move, slide the, the scroll bar over a little bit. And I want the volume to go back up right about here and bring it back up to the previous keyframe. So if I just hover my cursor over this yellow rubber band, the audio rubber band, you'll see that it has a, you can barely see probably in your monitor, but it has a little double arrow line with a line in between it showing you can click on this and lift it or lower it. If I click and raise this or lower it, I'm going to change the value of the preceding keyframe. See how the keyframe ahead here goes up and down? I'm ch changing that value. I don't want to do that. I want to go back to the original value. There we go. So I want to just add a keyframe here that's equal to the preceding one. To do that, when I hover my cursor over this little yellow, yellow rubber band and hold down the control key in Windows or the command key in Mac, that turns the cursor to have a little arrow with a plus after it. The plus means if you click here, you're going to add a keyframe. So I'll click on add a keyframe. Now that keyframe is equal in value to the preceding keyframe. If I hover over a keyframe, notice that the cursor has a little zero or a little diamond actually after it to indicate you're hovering over a diamond keyframe. All right, now after this keyframe, I want to bring the volume back up. So I can, up here on the effect controls panel, I could then just raise the volume back to, let's say, minus six or something. Or down here, I can add a keyframe by holding down the control key or the command key, clicking, adding it. And now I can just drag it, just drag on the keyframe and it go up a little bit. You'll see the values change there. They change kind of a in large val large figures, like they don't just go up like 0.1 at a time, they go up like a whole number at a time. If you hold down the controller or the command key, and then it'll incrementally change in small increments. See, it's just going up a little bit at a time now, in tenths or so. So I'm gonna take it back to minus six like that. By the way, if you hold down the control key over an existing uh, uh, keyframe uh, or a command key, you get this little V shape. That means if you click on it, you're going to turn it into a different kind of a keyframe, and from a linear keyframe to a Bezier keyframe, which uh, with audio is sometimes helpful, but I just don't want to. It can be confusing at this particular stage, so I wouldn't uh, necessarily convert it to a Bezier keyframe. So that's what the little V means when you hold on Control or Command over an existing keyframe. So I'm going to turn, let go of my Control key. So now I've added a keyframe there in the in the clip when she was only 14. And it raises the volume back up again, and I may want to drop it again later. But that's the basic process for how you do it. Now let's say you don't like where the keyframes ended up. For example, let's say you want this one to be closer to this or something. You can just drag it down here, click on it here, and drag it to the right. As you drag it though, you're probably going to change the value. That's one of the little pro drawbacks to working inside the, the clip view. Or up here in this view, you can drag keyframes too, but they're so close together, it's really hard to differentiate them. Well, to be able to zoom in on this panel, you can just click it to make it active. Now it's got an orange border around it. And now you can use the plus or the minus key, just as you would inside the timeline. And that gives, just spreads the keyframes out a little bit, spreads your view out a little bit. So let's say this particular keyframe right about there, this one down here matches that one there. If I just want to change its place in time, I just drag it left or right, and that won't change its value here. So 
So, so in the effect controls panel, it's easier to move keyframes without changing their value just by dragging them left and right. Down here, when you drag them left and right, it's pretty easy to drag them up and down at the same time, and that causes uh, changes to the value of the keyframe. So typically, if you're just going to drag something left or right, you, you do that up here in the effect controls panel. And if you decide that something, let's say, here should be a little bit quieter, like this keyframe down here should be a little bit quieter, you can try to drag it, up, drag it up and down here the same way we've done it before, holding down the control key to make a difference that way. Or you can navigate to the keyframe by clicking on one of these triangles, in this case the right triangle, since I want to go right. And now when you're on the keyframe, you can change the value here, and that will change the value of the keyframe. Notice how this little graph goes up and down as I move this guy back and forth. So that is how you work with keyframes to control volume in Premiere Pro.